What's up everybody, welcome to the last of the Shelf Collection video series and today it's the non-horror stuff so kind of ending on some okay like kind of normy stuff there but let's start off with the documentaries and the first one is all the colors of giallo now this is a documentary about the genre of uh, the giallo films and um as someone who's a big, huge uh, Giallo fan, this wasn't really satisfying. This doesn't really uh, get you too much new information. Uh, too, uh, too, uh, too much new information. Honestly, if you're new to the Giallo genre, this is a good one to kind of get you going on some classics. But if you're like me, uh, unsatisfying. Fulci for fake, I discussed this in my Severin um, unboxing. Uh, this is more of a docudrama, so it includes interviews intercut with uh, reenactments or some shit like that. I don't know, I haven't seen it. I hope it's good. I really do hope it's good because, you know, Fulci is one of my favorites. Now, this is a good documentary Penny Pinchers, The Kings of No Budget. Now, this is a documentary about really, really, really low budget filmmakers. Like under, under $100. You know, directors like Todd Sheets, um, uh, um, a few of the uh, shot on video classic directors and some of the new ones including the one who directed this which is uh, yeah, Todd Sheets, Tim Ritter, uh, Todd Dustin Ferguson, that's the guy he makes a lot of movies, Donald Farmers, Lloyd Kaufman, you know the score. So a pretty interesting documentary, it came out uh, from SRS Video now this is also a great documentary, not quite Hollywood, about the uh, Ozploitation films of the 70s. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite documentaries on the subject of exploitation films. Eurocrime, a lot of these documentaries have weird editing choices and this one definitely does. Uh, this is a feature length documentary about um, Politecchi films uh, from Italy in the 70s. So we have interviews with uh, John or greats like like Franco Nero, Fred Williamson, uh, Andrew Silva, John Saxon, you know, so interesting documentary, but not my favorite. Oh, this one. Stanley Kubrick, A Life in Picture. Now, I think this is a, this was a TV series. I don't know, I haven't seen this one yet, but a documentary on Stanley Kubrick. Now we're getting into the trailer compilations, Grindhouse trailer classics from Intervision. 55 classic grindhouse trailers. Uh, this is entertaining. I like these uh, trailer compilations and speaking of this is one one of the best series. I really need more of these, but it's Synapse Films 42nd Street Forever. This is volume 2 The Deuce and this is a volume 1. Now these are fun. They're f like fucking long like two to three hours long and there's a bunch of these and I really need to find more but I don't want to pay like full price for them. And there's also, I think, one or two Blu-rays. Speaking of trailer compilation on Blu-rays, Kung Fu, Kung, Kung, King, Kung, Kung Fu, King Trailers of Fury. Now this is a obviously a Kung Fu film uh, compilation. Pretty entertaining. The Godfather, now we're getting into the more uh, normy stuff. This is the uh, trilogy box set, but on DVD. I don't know why I haven't upgraded yet, because I do really enjoy this series. Chinatown. The Italian Job, fun little British crime comedy there. Uh, I do... I do enjoy it more than the original, because it has the 50s charm. Uh, Barbarella, I haven't seen this one yet, same thing for Westworld, uh, The Outlaw Josie Well, pretty good western, uh, when Clint Eastwood came back to the states, uh, he made a lot of these westerns and I really enjoyed that one. Sam Peckinpah, uh, one of my favorite directors, The Wild Bunch, one of the best western uh, westerns ever made. Same thing with The Magnificent Seven, love me these westerns. Uh, the Graduate uh, with Dustin Hoffman, classic, classic film. 
Same thing for Bonnie and Clyde. All these films, I feel like everyone has seen them. Everyone loves them. Uh, Midnight Cowboy. Now, this is the French title because Canada, uh, you need to have uh, bilingual covers, which is kind of stupid. But Macadam Cowboy, what does that even mean? Now, probably my favorite of the lot, Straw Dogs, classic film, another great masterpiece by Sam Peckinpah. Def Wish, everyone knows Def Wish. Apocalypse Now, again, I feel like all of these, everyone knows. Taxi Driver, one of my favorite. Now, there's these, like, meme pages on Instagram. I know I shouldn't, like, care about those. That meme, like, films. And apparently, Taxi Driver now is problematic for some reason. Probably because everyone gets offended at male-centric films because you know white male centric films because you know that's the end of the world and probably the same people bashing this film for that uh, I don't know or pieces of shit I don't know Taxi Driver is a classic how you cannot love that film you must be dead inside or just pretending being on your high horse Hardcore George C. Scott. Now, this is one of my favorite films of all time. It's such a great film. George C. Scott is spectacular. It's iconic. I love it. Now we're getting... I need to move this chair over. over. Uh, Tarantino. Now, this is getting the breakdowns by directors. Tarantino, of course, this basically includes all his films up to Django Unchained, which I have right here, one of my favorites. Then the Eightful Eight, love this edition, by the way, lovely, lovely still box. And then finally, his latest ones, his latest one, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now we're getting into Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick, of course, 2001. Yeah, this is gonna be a short video, guys, because, of course, Lolita, uh, Full Metal Jacket, like, of course, everyone knows these films. Clockwork Orange, these editions are pretty cool, they come with a little booklet. Eyes Wide Shut, and I need more Kubrick. Now, Scorsese, Mean Streets, I haven't seen that one yet. Another edition of Taxi Driver. To offend, um, to offend even more people. This is one of the best films ever made. This is one of the best character studies ever made. This paved the way for dark cinema in the 70s. Fuck you if you're offended by it. Raging Bull, another masterpiece. Probably my favorite, Scorsese, or definitely up there. Goodfellas just recently bought the Blu-ray. You'll see that in my next DVD Blu-ray update. Casino, probably another in my top Scorsese film. And finally, The Wolf of Wall Street, which is probably, again, in my top Scorsese films. Now I just have to move the bed over. Oh yeah. Now we're just getting into miscellaneous stuff. So some box sets over here is the Sam Peckinpah, the legendary Westerns collection. So uh, most of his Westerns, so that includes uh, The Wild Bunch, which I already have on Blu-ray, Pat Garrett and, the, uh, and Billy the Kid, uh, The Cable Hog, and Ride the High Country. Country. Like I said, I haven't seen really any of those except the Wild Bunch. I need to get back on my westerns. Um, I do really love westerns, spaghetti westerns, American westerns. Just the ones after the 60s. I'm not a big fan of 50s American westerns. Uh, but these, like I said, Sam Peckinpah does some great stuff. Rambo Stallone. So this is First Blood, Rambo First Blood Part 2. Rambo 3 and Rambo. Now, that's some confusing titles. Also need to upgrade these to Blu-ray, but honestly, I do really love this uh, box set. Same thing with this Rocky box set. Now, <laughs> let's be honest, the Rocky franchise is only great because of nostalgia. The first one is good, second is good, and then it just gets silly, but I 
do re I am really nostalgic about this uh, franchise uh, because once I was really sick in high school and I watched the entire series in like two days and just really loved it and this got me through like th that that terrible almost COVID like um, sickness I don't know why I, what I had but I I was dead for like three days. Tang Tang, uh, the first box set I really wanted, I really want the big one that's blue because I have the second part that includes all the rest of the episodes but it doesn't come on in that big box because obviously I bought it like fucking way later uh, because when I was a kid I just had money for one of these and the other one I did not so uh, here you go, beautiful, beautiful if you're a fan of Tintin, like I was, you know, being a kid, being French-Canadian, they always played a, on uh, Télé-Québec, and uh, before I had cable or satellite back then, that was all I had was Télé-Québec, and uh, Télé-Québec, yeah, so I watched a lot of Tintin as a kid. Ryan Gosling's Drive, one of my favorite films, probably my favorite by Nicholas Swindon Refn. Uh, even though I do really enjoy uh, Neon Demon, which was in my modern horror section, this is probably my favorite. The Big Short, great, great, great film. This is kind of like Wolf of Wall Street if it wasn't directed by Martin Scorsese, which it's exactly what it is, and it's about the 2008 stock market crash. Baby Driver, written directed by Edgar Wright and uh, Kevin Spacey. Why did you have to molest children? <laughs> Fair and Loathing in Las Vegas, great, great film with Johnny Depp and Benicio del Toro. Again, these films are just yeah. This is gonna be a really short video. Leaving Las Vegas. If you needed a reminder that Nicolas Cage is not only a great actor but one of the best out there. Watch this film, Double Bill It with Wild at Heart, which I recently watched for the first time in a movie theater, and I did really love love it. My favorite comedy of all time, this is a pretty nice pop art edition that uh, Sony made a couple years ago. I don't know, I bought it at HMV when it was still open, but great, great film, favorite comedy of all time. Now, if this is considered a comedy, which I don't think it is, it would be my favorite comedy of all time. This P.T. Anderson's... Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights, great film, uh, really one of my favorites, such a masterpiece of cinema. Argo, good, it's good, it's really good. Machete Kills, a terrible film. Uh, where is my machete, my original machete, uh, is it? Yeah, I think I threw it to my horror stuff for some reason. Uh, El Mariachi and Desperado. Great films, I uh, love the extras. Uh, the extras on um, Robert Rodriguez's films uh, uh, basically made me want to make movies. So at this point in my career and life, that shouldn't be a good thing. So fuck you, Robert. You fucking ruined my life. Uh, John Wick, a great film. John Wick 2, fun film. Dope. Now this is a film that nobody talks about that should be discussed more. It's uh, produced by Forrest Whitaker, it's directed by Rick Famui, I don't know. And it uh, stars a bunch of people, but it's a movie about um, music nerds. Um, yeah, it's uh, he's um, our main character is like obsessed with 90s hip hop in this modern day and age, and it just you just follow their struggle. I haven't seen this in a while, um, and I really need to rewatch it. But when I first watched it, I, I bought, totally blind bought it, didn't know anything about it, and just really loved it. Great film. Blade Runner 2049, I need the original there, but uh, great film. Uh, Sean Baker's The Florida Project with the stupid Walmart 
fucking price tag on it. Um, great, great film. Sean Baker is probably one of the one of the most inter- interesting uh, filmmakers of the modern era. He is diff- he, he was on the Criterion Closet and then he went on Severin's video thing and praised uh, Laura Gemser. So uh, he's my he's my type of guy. Green Room. A lot of people put this with their horror films. Ah, uh, it's not really. It's not really a horror film. It's more of a. It's more of a fucking balls out great film. Speaking of which, well, I guess really need to rewatch this. One of my favorites. Ronan. Now, for if that's an action film, that's an action film. If I have ever seen one, uh, directed by John Franken Frankenheimer, uh, and it's a masterpiece. Speaking of masterpieces, Blazing Saddles, Sin City. This edition is great. I got this is one of the first DVD I ever bought. I was too young to watch this film, but whatever. This should be with my Italian films, but blow up. Star 80. Great, uh, great, great, great film. Love this one. Gremlins, of course. Um, it's Gremlins. Oliver Stone's Platoon. I haven't seen this one yet. Six Cold War films, Cold War thrillers. Uh, I was just curious about these, and this was cheap, so. Conan the Complete Quest, so two Conan the Barbarian films. I haven't seen these one yet. Fargo, Masterpiece. Stand By Me, Masterpiece. Boys in the Hood, Masterpiece. Like I said, these are all, like you guys know, like Being John Malkovich, Mulholland Drive, Masterpiece. Ed Wood, definitely in my top 10. Such a wonderful, wonderful film. Crash, I haven't seen this one yet. It's playing at the theater near me and it's a film about is that the good crash? No, that's not the good crash. I'm getting confused with the David Cronenberg uh, one. What the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, my boxers. You can see them. Yeah. Hey. What is this? <laughs> Never seen it, obviously, because I wouldn't know what it is. Uh, the stand. This is TV. What is it doing here? Fucking dumb thing. Don't like, I don't like TV series. I know we live in a time and era of, have you seen the new Netflix series? series? No, I haven't, nor do I care. I don't want to invest all my life on stupid TV shows. This looks interesting. <laughs> Five action pack. Oh yeah, uh, the Reluctant Heroes is the only one I watched, and it was good. Sorry, my bed is squeaking because of the fucking too many, f- too much fucking I do on it. Ha ha ha. Andy uh, Andy Sedaris collection. These are all great films filled with action, explosions, and titties. Uh, Back to the Future, love this little box set, and I only paid two dollars for it. Worth every penny. Uh, Scarface, I paid ten dollars for this, as you can see by the big HMV sticker. That's what I don't miss about HMV. Stop doing this shit, that's why you're closed. The Terminator. Now these are more uh, obscure 80s, American Friend and Eve of Destruction. Now this is an original anchor base, so pretty pretty cool just for that. But I don't know, I haven't seen it uh, this yet. Eve of Destruction, I don't know, this looks fun. Oh shit, you movies stay here. Bad Lieutenant, great film. And then Days and Confuse and Robocop. So that does it for the Shelves now, let's go on to the box sets Now I couldn't leave you guys with these normie ass movies So we are are some box sets some color um, color correction. I work too much. God damn it some 
collector's edition of Evil Dead. And you know what's funny about this? Now this is the original Anchor Bay one, as you can see. This is a limited edition. It is a limited to 50,000. Now that's how healthy the DVD market was when this came out. Limited to 50,000. So this makes it one of the less valuable collector's edition ever. Uh, Halloween, 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 Halloween. Halloween 1 is good. Halloween 2 is good. Halloween 3 is a goddamn masterpiece. And the rest are ranging from <laughs> to fucking awful. Like the Rob Zombies remake. Uh, Friday the 13th. Now these are more consistent. They're not masterpieces, but they're consistent in their content. Now, this is one of my pride and joy. Sorry for the titties, YouTube. Uh, these are the Black Emmanuel's box. <laughs> Black Emmanuel's box. Um, they're triple features of the Emmanuel film starring Laura Gemser, except for one. I don't know, I guess they needed to fill their three per pack. And they are very, very out of print, print very, very rare, and very, very great. Here are my horror and movie books. Pinhead, you fucking ugly bastard. Um, Battle Royale, the collector's, uh, the Arrow Super Badass Edition that comes with a booklet, a card game, a track, a soundtrack, two cuts of both Battle Royale films. Caligula, signed by Malcolm McDowell. A Japanese Pikachu for Halloween. What'll be? The bullet for uh, the Tough Ones Blu-ray. And this is the I Drink Your Blood uh, needle. And these are just some little figurines. This is an Audi Quattro. That's a Chucky. Video Violence and Spine VHS. Now that Video Violence set is incredible. It does come with both movies on VHS, red tapes, and both movies on DVD. And this Spine thing is a Massacre's Video Limited Edition. And that movie is fucking awful. Lastly, for this um, shelf, uh, these are limited edition. VHS tapes from a French-Canadian YouTuber I really like and he did a great job with uh, the, sc the screenshots, uh, the tape, uh, like the 16 plus, uh, the signature and the limited to 35, which this one is 20, so a round number for your boy. I bought these was very intoxicated and spent way too much on tapes I will never watch. Uh, again, 20 uh, out of 25, and uh, these are videos that he made in English, and he talks about comics, which I couldn't give a fuck about. Why did I buy this? Why? I fucking hate superheroes. Why? <laughs> Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS, uh, still sealed. Now these are the original CIC releases. Um, and these came out in Canada, I think, and were found in uh, the distributors, like a uh, house or something. So these are now rare, but they're pretty cool to own. Uh, same thing with Cronenberg's Rabbit, although these are CFP. And again, these look gorgeous, and they're original. Basket say, case signed by Hennen Lauder. Uh, this is just a media release. Uh, Jaws, Les Dents de la Mer, uh, Breakfast Club, and Slapshot. Finally, Friday the 13th in French, the VHS, and Class of Newcomb High. This ugly bastard. Stop looking at me, you piece of shit. And these are soundtracks. Demoni 2, signed by Lamberto Bava. This is a, not a, 
not a soundtrack, I lied to you, this is a um, laser disc, a laser disc of the thing, soundtrack of the wild angels from that time, and finally a laser disc of Mad Max. Now this is why I want a goddamn laser disc player, but they're so expensive, I really want to see the thing in all of its 4x3 letterboxed. Yeah, no, okay. See you guys next time.